Hey guys, it's Intricate from AmigaLove.com. This is the first video I've made since the crazy COVID-19 hit our planet Earth a few weeks ago, at least in terms of my country and how it's impacted daily life. Like everyone around the world right now, I know it's a stressful time. It's a, a time of unprecedented change and we're all trying to figure out different ways to cope with that. And this last week, the way I chose to do that was to pull out good old Deluxe Paint 3, our old friend. I put together an image of Tron, which I've shared with uh, various people in the community, and it's actually been very well received and actually made me feel really good, and I think it's brought some joy to other people that have looked at it. Along the way, I've been asked multiple times, how did I do that? How did I create that image in 16 colors in 320 by 200? That's what I wanted to do here. I wanted to briefly, in just the next few minutes, show some of the things that I learned as I worked through this interesting artistic puzzle of creating a dynamic image like that with relatively basic tools in the hopes that maybe some of you watching this video might be inspired to create some of your own artwork utilizing the same techniques. And I swear, if you do, please show me. I would love to see what you come up with. Let's hop on into the Amiga Studio and check out Deluxe Paint 3. Okay guys, what I want to do is walk you through some of the basic tools and techniques that I used in order to create this image. Let's go to the very beginning. Um, when you first start, let's just start at the very, very beginning. When you first start Deluxe Paint, you, you, you're confronted with something like this. I'm in North America, I'm going to pick NTSC, and I was trying to purposefully challenge myself with the most limiting number of choices possible. Well, I didn't go all the way down to two colors. <laughs> this is really more like icon work. I went to 16, okay? Now, some people ask me, why didn't you go to 32? Or why didn't you go up to 64? Well, I could have, I just didn't feel like it. I wanted to see if I could really challenge myself with a very limited palette and still create a very cool image. And I think I succeeded in that. So I went with 32200. 16 colors, NTSC, and that's it. The first thing you have to do is you have to decide what colors you want, right? And you're gonna pick your palette over here in picture, change color palette. And there's all this stuff. Now, when you click on these, you can move the RGB sliders. Thankfully, they're very, very simple to move and to use. And it's not as complicated as Photoshop these days where each of these little hashes is a number, so it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. So I can move these around to create the different hues and values that I want. Okay, And what I did was I essentially focused on um, the reds and some, and some blues. And then of course you're always going to need a little bit of black and white. At least I do. I feel like I always do. So once you get your colors all set up, you can continue to come in here and modify them. Just know that if you've used them inside your painting, whatever color you've selected that you're starting to modify, if it's in the painting, it's gonna change it globally. All those pixels that have that color are gonna slowly change. Well, not slowly, but right on the spot as you move these around. Okay, see how it's doing it down here in the palette at the same time? Okay, so first thing I did was I needed to block out my letters. So let's take a look at where this is. What I started to do originally was I would, I just blocked things out. Okay, so this is where it's gonna get to. Let's, let's actually um, not even focus on this at this point. Okay, you know, if you use the little magnifier, you can just like zoom in onto a particular location and really get nice and tight. What I was doing was I was getting the line tool and I knew I wanted the logo to be all the way across the screen. I wasn't sure about the spacing and stuff, but I knew generally that's how big I wanted my letters to be. Okay. Now, to, to guarantee I was always getting about the same width, I used the clone tool a ton in this program. So, for example, if I'm going to make the T, 
I'm going to select that area, and I know that's about how wide I want the T to be. And I can start to use this. Is it perfect? No, but it gets me a nice general uh, shape that I want. And I can just kind of roughly bang this out, something like that, right? And I know I need this to be in quadrants, so I just have to kind of eyeball it. So that's kind of how I did the, the basic shapes. And you can use black, which is my background, whatever your background color is, you can use that as an eraser, okay? Now this was, this is kind of like, oh, really? Um, but see how there's white here and then there's black around it? The white is my foreground color. The black is my background color, okay? Background, I can use as an eraser. It's basically, it says, it looks black here, but it's essentially transparent. And whatever you choose your canvas uh, background color to be, that essentially can become an, an, an invisible color, okay? It's kind of kind of interesting the way that works um, once you finally figure that out, which took me a little while because I'm slow sometimes when it comes to stuff like that. There, so there's my T, basically. Um, and then the R took some took a little bit of work, but basically there's some really cool tools. I'm just going to do this really rough. It's not going to look awesome. Um, but basically, I like to use this fill tool a lot when I'm drawing big shapes. Oops, I need to be in white. Um, let's say it's matching that right there, right? And I know that the bottom of my R is going to be something like, oops, undo. Let's just zoom in there so I can really see what I'm doing. So I know that this curve is going to come down and connect to a thing. So I'm just going to do something like this. And I can see it over in the left, so I kind of see what I'm doing. And that looks about right. I'm just eyeballing it. So there's this little bendy tool. And you have to click on these little individual pixels or sizes of your brush to get some of these to behave properly when you click on them the first time if you were in a, a big mode, a fill mode. But basically what you do is you draw a line with the bendy. And then once you release the left mouse button, I can now pull this around, okay? And get the shape that I want. That looks pretty good, except I, I goofed that. And so rather than try and redraw the whole thing, because I like the thing that I did, I'm going to erase that. And I'll just add a pixel here on the end. No harm, no foul. Who cares? Now. Let's go up a little bit so I can see the top. And then I'm gonna use this again. And so I'm gonna click on this corner, holding the left mouse button down, dragging all the way across, getting it to where I want it, release. And now I'm moving the mouse and I'm, I'm just eyeballing it. And I'm like, yeah, that looks pretty sweet. Boom, there's my bend. Now I'm gonna fill it, boop, like that. Okay, well that's way too far, so you just bust out the bust out the black and there's that r that i was drawing now see obviously this is way too big there's not enough room for but you just keep making adjustments and then what do i do oh there's a giant gap we well, use the this brush tool and i actually use all this extra space i use this tool a ton and it's not cheating this is how the tool was designed to be used you move things out of your way that you want to keep you're not just starting over and deleting your, that would be so frustrating. And honestly, when I first started using Deluxe Paint, I didn't know that much about these tools, especially this, this tool is probably one of the most powerful tools in the entire kit. It really is. In Photoshop world, they call this the clone tool. In Deluxe Paint, it's the brush tool. And this brush tool is basically a copycat sucker. And it's even more powerful than what I'm showing here. And I'll, I'll explain what I mean by that in just a little bit. But for now, let me just select the, oops. You only have one level of undo, by the way, you guys. Um, so you, you kind of need to be a little, a little careful with that stuff. But anyway, let's get him right in there. Now I've probably got enough room for that O. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just do a giant white circle. Now look, it did it right there smack dab in the middle of my screen. That's not what I wanted, is it? Let me undo that. Well, that's probably right here where that ends middle middle point is so I'm gonna just eyeball it like this and that is good enough is that in the right position no so what do I do 
I do what I just did a second ago. I take this. Now look, I didn't get the end. Do that again. There. I love the the way it changes the colors when you're on these different lines. Okay, so there. So now I've got it. I'm just going to stick it down here for now. It's not hurting anything over there. And I will erase this again. You know, in the, in the beginning stages, it's a lot of this as you try and get the layout. You're just trying to get the layout figured out. And then grab that, grab him again, and now I can put it exactly where I want it and not have to worry. It would have been nice if I could have more easily moved that object around like it was on an individual layer, but that's not really how Deluxe Paint works. And you have to utilize its powerful brush system instead. At least that's the way I get around these, these, these problems. And so, oop, undo. But see, this is also why I did the little blue lines to help me align things more easily in the beginning as I work on my layout. Okay, and now I can actually use a black to get that middle of my circle, right? Stuff like that. And I might even go down in there like this. Okay, so that's basically how I created the, the letters in the very beginning. Well, how did you make them 3D? Okay, that was fun. So I'm just going to use three squares for every corner, and I'm going to just build that everywhere. I'm going to say one, two, three, and again, this T is totally janky, but you get the idea. And then I'm going to just pull, oops, undo, use the line tool, boo, and pull these down. And pull you down, and pull you down, okay? And I started to create it like that. And I did that for everything. I did that for the circle, inner, outer. I did that for the R. I had to create the same lines the same way as before. Um, so this took a little bit of work in the in these joint areas and it just takes a little bit of you know It's not a rush. You're not trying to do this In record time. It's for fun. So there's nothing rushing me look if this really bothered me here this T I could also Use that fun tool again and just grab this now I've got that, this is a grid, snap to grid thing, and it, it's actually, it kind of gets on my nerves. I, 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 usually when I click that, it's by accident, <laughs> and I want to un, undo that as quickly as possible. Okay, so I'm going to just pull you down right about to there, right about there, close enough. There's my T, and I probably would, do, you know, I'd redo the R and I'd make it all match, that kind of stuff. Okay, a couple more tips, real quick tips. Number one, if you want to select a background color that's different than black, you can right click on a color. And now see how that turned blue? And I can left click on any color, you know this already, to make your foreground color. But if I right click on a color, I can make that the background color. This is important when you're creating gradients later. At least it, in my case, it seems to make it work more often than not. And so let's create a gradient together really quickly because this was one of the most powerful tools that I used in this entire drawing. I'm going to use this. Each of these tools has multiple states. This is filled a solid color, which I've been using a lot already. This is uh, the outline, and you need, to have that, you need to have the proper paintbrush size selected for that. Now I can draw those types of boxes, right? Now, the reason why I'm doing this is I want to show you some really cool stuff with gradients. If you right click on the fill tool, which looks like this square with dribble coming out of it, it's supposed to be a paint bucket spilling deliberately onto a floor. If you right click on it, you can get to all of this really cool, all these extra settings. And there's gradient down here at the bottom, okay? I was either using this one or this one most of the time, uh, depending on the shape that I was working on. If I need to get back to solid fills, it's right up in here. But if I want to get into uh, these gradients, it needs to be down here. So let me show you how I did some of that stuff. Let's go with uh, left and right, horizontal for now. Now you see how up here there's a color with a line around it. 
that just means it's a solid white fill right now. There are not, there aren't two colors selected. You have to actually go, this is a, this is a little strange, but rather than color, you need to go over into picture change color palette. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to select a range of colors. There's two, well, there's several buttons here that are important, but the main one for creating gradients in the canvas are going to be using the range tool. The spread is if you want to, just, let's say I want to pick two colors and uh, blend between them, it can actually create that for you here. And it, it's a great way to create um, lots of different colors for that you want to use in your palette going forward. Um, but what I want to do is I want to create a range of this dark blue and then I'll say range and it, can you see the little two next to it? What do you want to do? I want to click on this one. So that's going to be a two color. Well, and it doesn't always. So let's go like this, that, and I'm going to say you. Now, see the two? It's taking my background color and it's taking my foreground color. So let me right click on the paint bucket. Now you can see that nice blend. There's my colors for my letters I was doing, basically. And you can make them vertical, you can make them horizontal. And this is really cool. You can create totally different dithering patterns. You know, this is just static. You get down to this side and it creates a nice, a nice blend like that, that you can manipulate if you want to. And that's what I did. So let's do like this. Now I didn't finish this letter T. So let's just cap it off to give you the basic idea. And I'm just gonna draw this right here. It's not how I did the actual drawing, but anyway, click that and boom. Now this one, because I've clicked that, undo, I need to get back to this color. There's my two, there. And so in this particular case, I will actually wanna go and make it vertical and then redo it. Now look at that, it does the light at the bottom. Ah, light at the, only one level of undo guys. Light at the bottom and dark at the top. That's the reverse of what I would have wanted. So let's try and fix that real quick. I want to flip it the other way. How do you do that? How do you change the direction of the gradient flow? It's not in a place you would probably look. I would have, I was looking in here like, how do I, what do, nope, that's not how you do it. So let's get the tool over here. And thank you for the zoom in view or I would never be able to use this program with these uh, 40 plus year old eyes. Okay, now let's reverse the flow. Go back into the change color palette and flip this little arrow Bloop. right there. Now get back over here and make sure that's like that. See, <laughs> did it do it? Did it? Change color palette. Bloop. There. Blue on top, light blue on the bottom, light blue on top, dark blue on the bottom. See how I just did that? That's how you can create some really, by drawing this line here in the middle is a way to, it's to cheat. Because it, it, you're not gonna be able to go dark blue, light blue, dark blue easily with this gradient tool, but you can do dark blue, light blue to a thing and then light blue, dark blue, and you can just erase the thing and create that really badass effect, right? That's cool. That's how you can, that's how I did the rings. I actually did one half of rings by chopping the rings in half and then reversing the flow, doing it the other way and then erasing that middle line and boop, it glued it all together. Let's look a little forward in my process. This was going a little bit further down. So there, there I am before I even did the gradients in the uh, letters. I was just focusing on the outline first. Now some of this stuff I did by hand. This is not utilizing the dithering tools or um, you know the stuff that's built into Deluxe Paint. This is actually coming in here and, and, and doing some of that by hand which I, I find relaxing and fun. Even if it's not 100% realistic it looks cool I think so that's how I did that. Um, and again, this was me just doing the three little corners, three little squares, dink, 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 all the way around. 
and drawing an inner uh, a letter on the inside of each of the of the letters kind of doubling it up like that right okay and so then let's go a little forward let's look at Tron 3 now I started adding the gradients right I started adding the gradients and I started to make it look more um, like like CRT with lines and so once my gradient was put in here with the dither I actually went in with the same color as the the light blue which is the bottom of the letters and I started to draw lines across the screen every so often to create that illusion that these were sort of um, electrical and and on an, an old-fashioned television screen which is how Tron was originally viewed if it wasn't in the movies it was on old CRTs like what I'm drawing on it right now so then let's go look at uh, number four that was me just adjusting the zero the O did you see it shift I shifted it just a tiny bit <laughs> and how did I do that uh, same thing I was doing before I needed I realized that the O wasn't I didn't like the spacing between the letters as I had created it so I chopped this off and I mean you're the artist you get to be picky if you want to be picky there and I had that and so this is an incredibly powerful feature but I can now select this and this is basically how I created layers guys like you're used to in Photoshop see how that's my brush now I can now save this and I actually you have to I put it all in the same place you, you, when you're creating one of these works of art um, just create a folder where you're gonna put all of those paintings and assets into the same folder for just that one drawing it's a great way to stay organized so if you want to start doing I don't know um, ET as your next one go create an ET folder and stick all the assets you need up just keep them all nice and tidy if you if you dump it all inside of your deluxe paint folders you're gonna get you're gonna get lost really really quickly because there's just too much stuff and I actually created a Tron O brush see that there that's what this is you go brush save and you drop in now when I load it up let's go look at five I don't know what it is let's see what five was I started putting people in here I need to, if you need to fix that I can now see how I still have I still have it loaded and if I were to close this program come back again later open up five and I want to just start over I could wipe this all out and go to brush load load Tron O brush it would put it here and I would just go smack after I clean this all out and made it black and start over what you see here though is how I started to build the characters and oh boy get out of my face Tron O brush what I started to do was just block them out I'm not the type of person who is going to just sit here and uh, just start beautifully drawing humanoid figures I need to block them out first and originally my characters looked more like this just lines and it, I was that that's something you can easily adjust and and change just to try and get proportion right and after I got this here I was pretty happy I actually realized later that I had made the man too short and I wound up using the fantastic brush clone or the brush tool to select him entirely after wiping out all the background and stretching him forward just basically making his rib cage taller and oh my gosh it fixed so much stuff let's see if I can even find that let's go to Tron 6 so here here I was doing more work and I'm using him as a brush now at this point my palette still wasn't quite the way I wanted it for the people but it's getting closer and I'm experimenting with how I want these effects to work and that's when I started to realize oh man when I make the people if I want their clothes to be black and when I when I make the people um, they become transparent see and that was actually a problem that I had to solve which it's not the biggest problem in the world but it was just annoying I was like wait I, maybe I need to fill them with a different color like gray and then once I pop them in here I can I can swap out the gray with black stuff like that so then let's see then we have Tron 7 
Now they're starting to come together, right? This is starting to look cool. Let me get rid of the people loaded on my brush. This is starting to get to the, the place where I wanted it to be. Um, and I was starting to experiment more with the glowy stuff, which is really hard when you're down to 16 colors. Um, draw an eight. And I just started to focus more and more on these two people. Tron new palette. Tron character brush, and then ultimately Tron 9. That's where I just stretched him out. You see how he just grew? He got taller. And then finally, Tron 10. Bam! With the rings. Please tell me how you did those rings. Okay, well, let's see if I can load Tron rings plane. There. I made these a brush. I drew them, got them the way I wanted. Um, and then I was like, oh, this is going to, this was kind of crazy. But I was like, but I don't want to drop it right on top of their feet. I spent so long getting their feet to look good. What should I do? Well, I then selected these guys, these feet, and I put them right on top of that, right? Well, first I had to go like this. Eliminate all of eliminate all of the stuff <laughs> Get some Bob Ross action and some happy little pixels You want to fire in the color This is close enough to demonstrate Close enough so now I'm gonna just grab that again I have a feeling it's my... I apologize for any background noise. It is probably... Um, my heater. There, see how I just did that? This is a good demonstration. Right now I have a different background color. And it's this peach color. Or very light brick red. Okay? And if I were to select the people right now with the clone tool... That, that color is also transparent color. Whatever is selected as the background. So if I select this, now black is solid, right? But if I right click on black, if I right click on black and make it the background color, and now I select this, this uh, set of pixels for my brush, now it's transparent. So now what do I wanna do? I want to decide where these people are going to stand. And she needs to have her toe on that little ring there. So I'm going to do it like this. Okay. Now I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to... This is a little bit tedious, but, you know, again, it's... I actually find this really relaxing and fun. I don't find this to be work, because I'm not having to do it to make a living. I'm doing it to chill out. And I, I'm usually listening to... Wave Shaper or um, some other badass uh, synth wave in the background, which really fits the Tron mood perfectly. Okay, there. Now, see, I just cut that out. Let's cut out her other leg. I'm just going to do this. This is this is the beautiful thing about working in a program that does not have anti-aliasing by default. You have to create the anti-aliasing, and what anti-aliasing means is in Photoshop or any other sophisticated paint program in 2020, if you pick a color like this and you're using a brush tool and it's usually going to be pressure sensitive, you're going to use a Wacom tablet, you're going to have all these other nice fancy schmancy things, and if I were to do that, it would not only just do the paint color, but it would try and give you a fade on the outer part of those pixels to blend in with the background depending on the pressure that you put on your brush when you mashed it onto the Wacom tablet or whatever. That, the, the, the fading on the edges of the pixels is anti-aliasing, it's that blending. And in the old days, video games didn't have it. And it was kind of a big deal when consoles and PC games later on in the 90s started to introduce anti-aliasing to their characters and their backgrounds. It was like, holy shit, you guys, look at the smooth blend. Well, <laughs> In 2020, I'm almost like, you know, I kind of dig it without it at this point. And if you can create 
if you can create a really cool um what looks like anti-aliasing with these crude tools crude by today's standards then you are doing pretty pretty dang good so let's go ahead and just blow these guys off this was one of the most complicated uh, problems that I had to solve in this whole program was how to get the, these rings in place without having to redraw stuff constantly sorry guys okay by the way and I learned this the hard way a while back <laughs> one level of undo right that magnifier they count that as an undo um, as a level so sometimes you might be zoomed into something and you may, and you made a goof and you zoom out I can't undo anymore because it counted the, the magnifying change as uh, the step and it's like oh you suck how did you do that to me it's times like that when you're like Oof, I'm glad I save multiple levels of my work throughout the entire process because sometimes it's easier just to go back a stage and, and start over. Okay, so now here are my rings. How did I get them in place? Well, same thing we've been doing this whole time. Grab that and put them right over their feet, which is right here. Now I'm not gonna save that. Well, sure, why not? That's it, that's how I did it. Undo. Okay, the last piece of this, besides like this kind of stuff, the the little pixels, that was all done by hand. Um, and it, you know, it's the kind of thing where you just zoom in and zoom out and you're eyeballing it. But this down here, can you guys see that? Those really cool gradients? Let me show you really quickly the basic idea of how I did that. It's like this, I drew a line down the middle. Okay, and then what I wanna do is I wanna say, I wanna get a, um, couple different colors uh, but you can also create you can create a color range that goes from this color all the way down to that and and let's see what that looks like let's go to the change color palette I'm gonna say here range to here boom now let's go inside there see how it's got more it's got multiple levels of that color range it creates a really nice blend and so what I did was, yeah, light from this direction, dark to the back, light from this direction, dark to the back, see, light to dark, and then stick that, and then I had to hand draw those as a darker color. Okay, and then you need to reverse the color, here, range, here, there, there. There. And then once you've got it like this, then I basically said, okay, I'm going to take that really dark brick color and I'm going to create areas here where I can uh, create these really dark gradients from like that black to this really, really dark brown color. And you just keep on going. And then from that point, you zoom in, see these little things. I just drew those in by hand. Just give those little highlights because when it's zoomed out, it kind of looks like a nice little doo -doo -doo -doo. The CRT does a nice thing of blending those for you and it, it does create the illusion of anti-aliasing. When you zoom in there, it's blocky. But that's not how people are going to view your artwork when you're done, so you don't worry about it. And that's basically it, guys. Block out your drawing at the beginning to create your layout and use the heck out of the brush tool Right? And understand how to flip back and forth between background colors, utilizing foreground colors, gradient paint bucket stuff. You should just do a couple of tutorials in the back of the manual if you, if you really don't get it. And, and just do them on squares. Just do them on squares until you think you've got it. Once you have that down, you can do all this. You can do it. All you gotta do is be patient, be observant, find something that you really love, and try and copy it. That's how the great artists learned. That's how they all learned back in the day. Find some art that you really, really love and try and copy it. And you're going to learn these tools that I just described in the past 20 minutes or whatever the hell it's been. And remember, guys, keep that Amiga love flowing.